This video is all about gravity, which basically means you need to know the difference between mass and weight, and you need to be able to calculate the weight of an object. Also, there's a little bit about the centre of mass, which you also have to know about. The basics about gravity are that it's a non-contact force, and that because it's a force, it's a vector quantity. The next thing you have to know about gravity is that everything in the universe with mass attracts every other object in the universe with mass. So right now, the camera is attracted to me, the camera is attracted to the Earth, the camera is attracted to the Moon, the Moon is attracted to the camera. Everything on this desk is attracted to every other object because these have both got mass. Okay, now the bigger the mass, the bigger the force of gravity between them. Okay, but the further apart they are, the weaker that force is. Comparing mass and weight. By comparing mass and weight is easier. We basically just stick them in a table and we look at mass and weight separately and compare them for each different property. Mass is the amount of matter or stuff in an object. Whereas weight is a force due to the pull of gravity on that object. So if I just pick a random object like a phone, the mass of it is the amount of stuff in it, but the weight of it is the force of gravity acting down on that object. So that should help us easily understand the next property, which is that the mass of this object won't change depending on where it is in the, in the universe. Take this phone to the moon, it's still got the same mass. However, its weight will change. So it will have less weight on the moon because there's less gravity pulling it down. So you'd be able to lift up heavier things than you would on Earth because there's less gravity on the moon, there's less force, there's less weight on every object. Also means if you were doing the Olympics, you'd be able to jump much higher, actually six times higher on the moon. The units for mass are kilograms. So any time in any question, if you see a number followed by kilograms, you know that's the mass of the object. That will not change no matter where you are in the universe. Whereas if you see a number on your question and its units are newtons, you know that that is going to be the weight of the object, not the mass. Okay, so mass is in kilograms, weight is in newtons. The final thing is how you measure mass and weight. So to measure the mass of something, you just use one of these top pan balance. So you make sure it's set to zero, so there's no zero error at the beginning. You put the object on and then you'll just find out its mass. So this is using a top pan balance. Okay, a lot of people just say it's a set of scales, but it's top pan balance. If we want to measure the weight of an object though, we need to use what's called on the specification, a spring calibrated balance. Now to you and me, you just have to remember that that's a Newton meter. So this is a Newton meter. Calibrated means it's got a scale down here which has been calibrated, i.e. matched two different weights. Okay, so if I hang something on the end of here now, I will be able to find how much this pulls down by how much force it exerts on that object. This one goes up to 30 Newtons, doesn't pull it too much. So I actually probably need a more sensitive Newton meter here. So this is telling me that this has actually got a force of one Newton. Just for reference, one Newton is the force of one of these little 100 gram masses. So that's a force of one Newton. Okay, about four packets of crisps in your hand, that's one Newton. Gravitational fields, so we represent a field, i.e. a place where a force can be exerted when it's a non-contact force, by drawing a series of field lines. The closer the spacing of those field lines, the stronger the field. This is true for electric fields, magnetic fields, and gravitational fields. So if the field lines are more spaced out, it's weaker. You can see that on the diagram, the field lines are getting further apart. Calculating weight. So it's a simple equation we've got to learn, just three things in it. The weight of an object is equal to the mass of the object times by the gravitational field strength at that point. We can write that in symbols as just W equals mg. This is how I remember it, W equals mg. I don't remember the word equations for things, just remember the symbol equations. Weight is measured in newtons, the mass is measured in kilograms, and gravitational field strength is measured in newtons per kilogram. And you will always be given the gravitational field strength in any calculations that you need to know. On Earth, it's 9.8 newtons per kilogram. So the equation basically shows that the weight of an object depends on gravity because mass never changes. So the weaker the gravity is, the smaller the weight of the object. But it also shows that weight and mass are directly proportional. So if we plot a graph of weight against mass, so weight on the y-axis, mass on the x-axis, we get a straight line through the origin. And a straight line through the origin says that those two quantities are directly proportional. It's a common misconception 
that students seem to have, that if you take something into space, it becomes weightless. Now, if we have a look at the equation, which is what you need to be able to do, weight is mass times gravity. So the only way you can get something to be weightless is if the mass was zero or gravity was zero. Well, the mass doesn't change anywhere in the universe. So you go into space, your mass is still there. It's not zero. Is the gravitational field strength zero? Well, it's not. Otherwise, if you're in the space station, it would just float away. It's pulled down by gravity. The moon's pulled in by gravity. It's the Earth's gravitational field. So the gravitational field strength is not zero outside of the Earth's surface. So if you look at something like, for example, the International Space Station, gravity is about 0.9 what it is on Earth. So that's 0.9 times 9.8. So that gives you 8.8 .8 newtons per kilogram. So you are not weightless on the International Space Station. Centre of mass. At the centre of mass of an object is defined to be the point at which the mass of the object can be considered to be concentrated. You just have to know that definition. Now, that centre of mass can actually be outside of the object. So, for example, in a tyre, the centre of mass is actually in the centre of the tyre, in the, in the space where there is no actual tyre. Finding the centre of mass is really easy, especially if the object's symmetrical because the centre of mass will lie along one of the axes of symmetry. Okay, now if you just put it down two axes of symmetry, where those two lines cross, that's where the centre of mass is. Now, suppose you've got a non-symmetrical shape like this, okay, just a random planar object, planar just meaning flat, okay, so where's the centre of mass of the object? What you can do is just suspend the object on a pin, so if it's freely suspended from any point, so if we put that in on here, and I let it spin, okay, so that's there. Now, if we drew a line down from there, the centre of mass will lie directly below the point of suspension. Now, if I pick any other point and put it on there, I'm just going to do one that I've already done here, Put it on another point and again let it swing freely okay when that stops spinning the center of mass will lie directly under that point of suspension so where those two points cross that will be the center of mass now if those points cross there what should be possible is for you to balance that object at that point okay if it is the center of mass so you know you've got it right